Throughout his candidacy, President Trump promised to drain the swamp, the fetid, stinking hole of Washington, D.C. that had betrayed ordinary Americans. He railed against insiders, the people who made D.C. worthy of disdain. Then he populated his cabinet with Goldman Sachs banksters. You know, the financial masters of the universe who gambled with your money, then lost it, and demanded that you cover their debts? Well, they're in charge of part of the swamp right now, and they're continuing to grab ever more wealth for themselves and others, like Donald Trump. Trump continues to pound the drum of accusation and demonization against the press and our judiciary. That's convenient for any autocrat who wants to undermine the people who hold them accountable and stop their excesses. Actually, Trump sees these people as enemies, and he attacks them viciously almost daily. That's effective in numbing his base to factual reports about his, let's call them, dalliances from the Constitution. Trump demanded former FBI Director James Comey's loyalty to him, which Comey sensibly refused. At the time, Comey was looking into possible involvement of Trump and his election team with Russians who meddled with the U.S. election. Comey wouldn't quash the investigation as Trump asked, so Trump fired him. Eliminating opposition? It's what autocrats do. Actually, Trump consistently demands loyalty to himself alone and doesn't seem to recognize that all government hires, including the president, have pledged loyalty to the Constitution of the United States of America and not to the president. However, demanding personal loyalty is what autocrats do. Just recall that infinitely embarrassing, okay, vomitous, cabinet meeting as, as his cabinet members took turns fawning over great leader. That must have made even psycho autocrat Kim Jong-un in North Korea envious. Trump uses Twitter to maintain a constant barrage of outrageous, accusatory, and false claims, the kind Kellyanne Conway promoted as alternative facts. Okay, you could call them lies. They keep us watching Trump's latest shiny objects instead of his likely treasonous actions. Trump has created a federal panel to collect all U.S. voter registration information in order to stop our nearly non-existent voter fraud. Have you any doubt whatsoever that what he really wants to do is to restrict the voting rights of all citizens who are likely to vote against him? Remember, for an autocrat, it's all about aggregating power. Trump is trying to replace his chief toady, Attorney General Jeff Sessions, with someone who hasn't recused himself from all things Russia. That would allow the new AG to fire Robert Mueller and end the investigation into Trump's and the Trump's organization's possibly illegal and possibly treasonous behavior with Russia. Trump has tweeted that he wants the Justice Department to prosecute Hillary Clinton for by something or other. It seems that Trump wants the people in the Justice Department to be his very own vigilantes and the FBI his thugs. Autocrats like that. Trump is even looking into the ability to pardon his staff, his family, and himself. Should that happen, who will hold Trump accountable? Who will stop him from committing yet more crimes? Given this nearly spineless Republican Party, what else will he be able to get away with? This is the stuff of would-be dictators stacking the deck for themselves so that they can get away with anything. Earlier in the year, Trump tried to refuse all Muslims entry into the U.S., even including returning American citizens who were Muslim. Later, he pared down his hate list to people from seven Muslim-majority countries, not even one of which had attacked us. On July 26 of this year, President Trump issued an executive order banning all transgender Americans from the military. To whom would such enemy creation and hateful actions appeal? Gary Kasparov can help us understand. Kasparov is likely the best chess player ever and is a Putin critic. Having lived in the Soviet Union, he knows a thing or two about autocrats. Here's a Kasparov tweet from the day after Trump tweeted his banning of transgender Americans from the military. Quote, Autocratic distraction. Who do my supporters hate? Who can I get them to hate? How can I make the hated targets angry so they lash out? Close quotes. 
That's what autocrats do. They distract us with outrageous, divisive stupidities and get us to hate each other and then lash out against one another as they go about aggregating all power to themselves. It's classic divide and conquer. It's always dangerous to make comparisons to Adolf Hitler, but there are parallels here. Like Hitler, Trump won a democratic election with less than 50% of the popular vote. Like Hitler, he surrounds himself with toadies who will never confront him. Like Hitler, he undermines the rule of law. Like Hitler, he makes bombastic, false declarations that polarize citizens. Like Hitler, he constantly accuses and humiliates others in order to diminish them and to create enemies for followers to hate. Like Hitler, he neutralizes those who might have power to check him. And like Hitler, he tries to incrementally take rights from the people and aggregate power to himself. Many have warned us about the creep of fascism in America, including me in several blog posts. It is something that I had never dreamed could happen, yet it was foretold by Henry Wallace, FDR's vice president, Professor Timothy Snyder, and others. It's happening in plain sight right now in America. In another time of peril heaped upon us by an autocratic ruler, Thomas Paine warned us clearly that these are the times that try men's souls. And so it is today. The bugle is sounding and we must answer the call or we will lose our democracy. I'm Jack Alshuler.